Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 uh, Function Foundations Lesson 7, Key Features of Functions, Homework Review, Part 3. And uh, in Part 1, Part 2, we had a question that went up quite a bit, discussed different parts of the graph, a uh, function in this case, and how to find uh, particular values in the graph as far as given f of whatever value we had. Zeros, uh, we found in this case the um, when the function is increasing and decreasing, we found relative maxes and mins, and we also talked about, in this case, uh, composition of functions, how to use uh, a formula as well as using the graph to find our values. Here for number two, uh, we were asked to find for the function 9, f g of x equals 9 minus x plus 1 squared, uh, we're asked to sketch a graph of g on the axis provided. And so we can randomly <coughs> pick some values of x's and y's, but one of the things that uh, we should keep in mind is that there is uh, what we call the uh, a uh, the the uh, vertex form of a parabola, which really is given to us as um, y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k is going to be our our uh, vertex. And so looking at this, we really see in this case that g of x is equal to negative 1 x plus 1 squared plus 9. Now a couple of things in this case, when we take a look at the graph, well our vertex, if it's x minus h, our h value should be negative 1 because uh, x minus negative 1 seems x plus 1. Our k value is going to be 9, so our vertex is going to occur at negative 1, 9. The second thing in this case is a is equal to negative 1, okay? And so I'm going to kind of talk about how to graph a parabola based upon a, based, given a vertex, which is negative 1, 9. So we'll graph that first. So let's see, negative 1, 9, uh, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So our, this is our vertex. Now, because it's the a value is negative 1, a negative a value, it tells us in this case for parabola that we are going to be facing downwards. Our, our, our parabola is going to be facing downwards. And negative 1, normally positive 1, we follow a certain pattern. You move w 1 left or right, we're going to square that value. The distance from, uh, from, from our vertex, in this case horizontally, we square that distance um, you know, to find the distance vertically. Now, if it was positive one, we're going upwards, because because negative one, we go downwards. And so, in this situation, if I move to the right one, one space x, I go down one squared. So one squared is one. So, so that's one coordinate. Also matches to the left of that coordinate. If I go left one, so negative one squared is positive one. So that's a coordinate right here. Okay. All right. Sorry, my I'm using my finger, so it's not that pretty, but hopefully you can get the uh, the coordinates though. So again, the vertex is negative 1, 9, all right? And this is our x and y, in this case, x and y. Okay, uh, now if I move to the right 2, 2 squared is 4, and because we're going down, we go down 4. So we're going to go to this coordinate here. Same thing, if I move to the left 2, 2 squared would be 4. So we're going down to this coordinate. Okay. And of course, you go, go to the right three from the vertex, go down nine. So we're going to be at this coordinate here and this coordinate here. Because going right three and left three, and three squared is going to be nine. Yeah, we can go even further, four squared, we go to the right four, four squared, going down 16. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, which of course would be, in this case, I believe this point here. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's perfect. Okay, so, and then we'll have this point here because the idea also with the problem, we have symmetry. Okay, our axis symmetry is going to be at x equals negative 1, okay? And so our graph is going to look something like this. Okay, 
All right, there you go. And so what are some coordinates here? Um, we have some coordinates I'll put on the side here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see now. So we have here, it looks like on the leftmost coordinate, the ones I plotted would be neg five comma neg seven. And we have in neg four, neg four comma zero. We have neg three comma five, neg two comma eight, neg one comma nine. We have zero comma eight, one, one comma five, two comma zero and three comma next seven so there's some coordinates in the graph all right and you can use a graphing calculator to match up with this as well too so uh, but this is one way to to do graphing if it was negative two what i would do is i would take the uh, measure of mid to left or right of the vertex of the vertex i would take that distance horizontal distance square it and then multiply it by negative two to figure how far i'm going down here is multiply by negative one now, what are the zeros of our graph? So the zeros here we see in this case are going to be where the graph crosses the x-axis. And our zeros, or in this case, where g of x is equal to zero. We see that occurring at x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. Okay? Meaning these coordinates here, negative 4 comma 0 and 2 comma 0. All right. Now, over which interval is g of x decreasing? Now, here's the interesting part. It, one might say, well, it's, the whole thing is facing downwards. However, decreasing means as the graph moves to the right, as the graph moves to the right, the value of the graph goes, it basically goes downwards or decreases or gets lower as we continue moving to the right. So here, well, I'm not gonna include any of the, any of the parts that are the, to the left of the vertex because that would be the parts that are increasing. So where our graph is gonna be decreasing, again, we're taking a look at where the graph moves to the right. Okay, I'm gonna start at the vertex, the highest point, and go downwards. And it doesn't stop, it continues onwards. So for what interval? is g of x decreasing? g of x is decreasing when x is greater than negative one. Okay, for all values of x greater than negative one, that's when the graph is decreasing because, and when we look at also, we talk about decreasing as we continue going downwards as uh, we move to the right. Um, just consider that the that any, the next value of x, as, as we move to the right of x, the y values get lower and lower and lesser in value, okay? And there's a part D in this case. Over what interval is G of X greater than or equal to zero? Now, very important, this part here, greater than or equal to zero. Because in this case, we will allow ourselves, you know, in the part of the graph where it can equal zero. So where does that occur? The equal to zero, Y is equal to zero. At, at the roots. So it would be this part of your graph. And we would include those points, the, the roots in this case, the zeros. So the answer for D in this case would be in, for here, the interval from negative four is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to two. So this will be the interval in which the, the function g of x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and I'll make this full screen so you guys can take a look at the entire page. All right. So this is the analysis. Now, again, um, I just want to show you one technique of finding the coordinates, you know, using, using what's called the vertex form. We might spend a lesson just talking about vertex form of a parabola. Because um, it's kind of given that form, we could have also used a graphing calculator and found some x values and y values. Uh, but the nice thing about the vertex form is that um, finding the vertex, you know that should be symmetry for left and right side of it, and all. So that's the thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the end of part three of our homework review for the key features of functions, and we'll continue on in this case. So we'll make sure you guys uh, get a chance again review some of the stuff here. Uh, again. 
finding the sketching uh, part, part A, you could have used a graphing calculator to find the, find the values, but you should yourself plot the points and sketch your graph them. Okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. Again, if you have found this video helpful in any way, please give it a like. Also, subscribe to the channel. If you've not done so already, turn on notifications so that you will find out when new videos are being added to the channel. All right, so uh, this goes for all my Algebra 2 students uh, who are coming up this year. And so hopefully you guys are studying and making sure you understand material because we'll see this again, uh, not only um, in Algebra 2, we're going to see this again in Pre-Calc and Calculus and SAT. So knowing that all these things are pretty important. So thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next video. Take care and be safe.